I'm for today's Resilience Reset. Welcome. Welcome. I hope you had an incredible weekend and are ready and your week has started off awesomely. Is that a word? I'm going to say yes, it is. Uh, and if not, it's okay because right now is your chance to reset. And the conversation we're going to have today is around anxiety as it relates to your workload. Because if your to-do list is causing you anxiety, then we've got a problem because you are going to be creating and feeling unnecessary stress in your life because you've got a lot of things to do. So I would love to have your questions, your comments, your uh, insights shared in the chat box. I'll bring you up on the screen. And uh, other than that, I'm just going to riff on today's Resilience Reset. So here's the reality. There is always going to be too much to do with too little time and too few resources. That is just how life goes. Like, that's it. And so every time that we feel emotionally attached to the, the fact that we can't get everything done in the amount of time allotted, then what happens is we're just like, creating stress based on what's happening in the real world that we have zero control over because it just it's just the way the world works now there are things we can do to have less to do right we can start setting boundaries i'm really trying hard to do that it's really hard i mean i just had to do that with uh, uh someone who i um you know would love to spend more time with and i just can't right because we all have our limitations and as soon as we can recognize that then we can choose how we're going to spend that time and you know even if it's not we, we we're never going to be able to do it all and, you know, so often people are chasing the end of a to-do list, right? Like that, that coveted, like one day I'm going to be caught up. No, <laughs> you won't be. Because the truth is when we take something off the list, inevitably one, two, or even 10 things go back on the list, get added to it. And so it's not a to-do list. It's a task circle. It's never going to end. And so for you, it's like, okay, what does that mean? And when is the anxiety coming up? So the first piece, we got to look at situational awareness. Let's actually, you know what, today, let's use my problem solving framework. The problem solving framework for the human experience here on the Resilience Reset. Okay, so situational awareness, self-awareness, solution activation. So situational awareness, we want to get really clear on what's happening so that we're solving the right problem. And also we've got a way to categorize all that's happening in here. So we're going to talk about that. Second thing we want to look at self-awareness. How am I contributing or how am I responding to the issue at hand? And potentially, how am I making it harder to deal with? So let's do that. And then let's look at solution activation. Situational awareness, something that's really, really important is to uh, use, and if you haven't gone in, you might want to look more at some of my other videos about this, but tasks, obstacles, and adversities. Now, by the way, all of this is in my book, Take Back Your Weekend, so definitely get a copy of that if this interests you, but let, let's keep going. So a lot of times what we do is we call everything stress. As a society, we tend to bucket everything under the stressful, you know, thing, or, you know, we can use the word anxiety. It's just like all this stuff I got to deal with, right? And so the first thing I want you to do is if you're feeling anxiety for everything you have to get done, is I want you to look at it and write it all out, right? I was working with a client and she's like, I don't want to write it all out because I'm so anxious about what's on it. Then we wrote it all out and it was like, not that much stuff. But when it's up in our mind, what happens is we, we can uh, catastrophize it, right? We can awfulize it. Thank you for that word, Jeannie Martinson this morning in our chit chat. And we can awfulize everything that we need to get done. But when it's on paper, we can look at it and go very objectively. So the first thing we want to do is get everything out of your brain so that we can get it down on paper. 
then looking at it and deciding, is it a task? Now, a task is something that just needs to get done. You already know how to do it. You maybe don't want to do it, but you can do it. Okay, that's a task. The next thing is an obstacle. Now, an obstacle is different. An obstacle requires a bit of objectivity. It requires some thinking, a little bit of space, looking at the problem, finding a solution, working through the problem solving framework. Often, Kathy's here. Awesome. Hey, hey, nice to see you. Um, so, so really knowing the difference between those two things. And, you know, I was having a conversation earlier with someone around this very fact, because she said, you know, it's interesting. I bucket all my tasks and obstacles into the same, same list, right? Which we're going to call a task circle. And she's like, the truth is the tasks, I know how long they're going to take me. I can do them, but the obstacles require a different level of thinking. So I often end up undershooting how long they're going to take, right? Which is very true. And so when we split them and we look at our list of what's causing us trouble, so tasks we need to do, obstacles we need to solve, and adversities, which are very different. Adversities are the overarching life events, the things that we, like they're the catastrophic external forces that will forever change the way we know our lives to be. And so, for example, maybe you go through a divorce, maybe you get a cancer diagnosis, maybe someone you love dies. Uh, th these are the big things in our lives. And as a society, we tend to flip them. We tend to be like, oh, I'm totally fine. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I just went through this horrible thing over here. But if somebody asks you how you are, typically you're like, oh, my God, I'm so busy. Like, it's really a badge of honor right? And so we've got to split these up. And this is the first thing to get rid of the anxiety from your to-do list is get it all on paper. All the tasks, all the things you got to solve, let's get it out and look at what needs to happen. Because when we know that, then we can make the right decision. Okay, a task I need to do or delegate or delete, right? No emotion required, just get it done. And if it's an obstacle, okay, how am I going to solve it? Do I need somebody to come in and help me? Do I just need time to be able to figure it out? Do I just need to dive in and, you know, get rolling on it? What's the option? Adversity, you need to heal. In order to heal, we need to go into the difficult feelings. We can't fix an adversity. We need to process them. So all that to say, uh, Greg's going to say something. I'm going to bring him up. Okay. Uh, happy Monday, Allison. Happy Monday, Greg. Much like the why is the reason for doing, I think of my to-dos as the platform that enables and empowers me to achieve them. Then I skip stress and shift to gratitude. What a fantastic reframe. That's really cool. I like that. Because, And actually, you know what book we're doing this week? Is it here? Is it beside me? Yes, it is. Start with why. Thursday's book review, because every Thursday now I do a review of a book, which means I have to read at least a book a week. <laughs> I love it. Uh, but that's right, because it fuels you, right? And so your to-dos are the platform that enables and empowers you to achieve your why. Skip to stress, shift to gratitude. What a great repositioning. I really like that. So thank you for sharing. So once we, uh, you know, look at this and we know everything we need to get done, that anxiety that's swirling in your head, oh, I got to get this, I got to get this, I got to get this. Once we have it all on paper, now we're going to talk about solution activation in a little bit. But once we have it on paper, then you can look at it objectively and, and be like, okay, what deserves my emotional contribution versus what do I need to just look at and, and leave and forget or delegate or just kind of get it done. Now we're going to go into self-awareness. And this is, as you know, my favorite part of it all, because this is where the human experience just really can do a number on us, right? When it comes to this anxiety that we're creating around everything we need to get done. So first question I might ask is something like, uh, and by the way, when we do self-awareness, we want to think from a mental perspective. 
right? What are we thinking? What are we saying? What words are we using? We want to think from an emotional perspective. What is this bringing up for me? How, uh, you know, what, what sort of emotion could I name? Is there fear? Is there everything we want to think from an emotional and we want to think from a physical perspective. So if I'm feeling anxious and overwhelmed by my to-do list, am I physically not tracking things the right way? Do I not have somewhere that's, you know, pulling everything together? Like it could be all of those pieces. So let's start with the mental game. So am I exaggerating what needs to get done? Am I not tracking appropriately what needs to get done? Am I putting the wrong expectations out there, like in terms of when I can get these done by? So am I not setting boundaries and therefore having, um, you know, too many things on my list that in the same amount of deadline, like for the same deadline, and it's just like completely impossible. So I've like promised something to somebody that I can't deliver. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, and by the way, there's no real set of questions for any of this. It's just playing and getting compassionately curious about how you're feeling about something so that you can start to explore, is there a better way for me to do this? And then emotionally, how is it, how is it tying, uh, like, how, how are you feeling? So I, I get a lot of this when I'm talking with people. You know, I can't relax because I feel so guilty. I feel guilty that I have so much work to do. When in actual fact, feeling guilty about having so much work to do not only robs you of your ability to relax so you can recharge, so you can actually get the work done, but it does absolutely nothing to help you get the thing done. <laughs> it's like such a useless emotion, such a useless emotion. Now, all emotions will highlight something for us. You know, where is that guilt coming from? What is the expectation of it? Um, you know, like wh what's there under the surface? But it doesn't serve in any way to feel guilty about not doing something. Okay. So emotional response. So are you afraid that, oh, here, if I get this, like, are there tasks on there that you're not doing for a specific reason, right? So there, there might be like, oh, I'm afraid I don't know how to do this, or oh, I'm procrastinating because, you know, I, I don't really think it's going to work and it's going to be a waste of time. I'm afraid of people, how they're going to react to me. Like it could be so many different pieces of the puzzle. And this is just the playing with the self-awareness around the anxiety. When does it come up? What types of projects do I get really anxious for? Uh, is there a time when I get anxious? Is it when I go to sleep at night and then my, my brain starts, you know, into hyperdrive? I know for me, I used to do that, right? And then I'd be like, I couldn't sleep and I'd be like trying to remember everything I thought I had to do. And so now I just have a piece of uh, paper and a pen above, like I have like a headboard that has a shelf on it. And I just reach behind me, grab it, scribble it out, put it back and then let it out. And you know, one of the lines I say in my book is trust the paper, get the sleep. But so often we don't actually write it down in a trackable form. So then how can you expect yourself to be able to fully and truly relax and get the sleep? I don't know. I don't think you can. I don't think you can. All right. So we've got the recognition. Okay. Oh, and that's another self-awareness piece. Recognizing it's never going to end. And so what does that mean for your business or your professional life? Right? Like what, what are the systems that you're trying to get done? And then you're like, oh, wait, no, because when I do this part of the project, then it creates this part of the project. It's almost like a big circle, right? And so figuring out your, uh, your false expectations or misguided expectations would be a better word is really important because I think it's all about this mismatch of expectations. Yeah, throw in the chat box, by the way, if you want to like talk or, or offer any insight in this. I hope this is resonating and 
um, you know, I've been there, right? And I've worked with so many people who get really anxious about everything that needs to get done. And the problem is, is that it's usually like the truth is it's all about perspective, right? Like we need the organization, we need a system, 100%. We're going to talk about that in a minute, but it's all about the perspective. Everything external, i.e. to do's, there's just things that need to be done. Your response to those things is what causes the stress. And the, the, if we want to like break the cycle of stress and anxiety out in the world, then what we need to do is we need to stop having this emotional connection to these things that are external to us. Now, I'm not saying don't feel emotion. Of course, we want to feel it. It's part of the most beautiful part of our human experience. But stop giving your emotion to the fact that you forgot to send an email. Write it down. Go, oh, I forgot to so send so-and-so an email. I did this last night. Three people. I was like, oh, my God. Right? Because I was away to a Thursday, Friday. And a couple of people who had sent me notes. like, uh, And I was like, oh, those are important. <laughs> Oops. So I just wrote it down, that little piece of paper behind me, right? Put it on there. And then when I got up this morning, got to my desk, I could always grab the paper. What did I remember in the middle of the night last night or, you know, and started and I did those three things. No emotion required, no guilt, no big apology, just get it done. If I would have in the past, how I would have maybe handled that is when, oh my gosh, I forgot to send those notes, probably would have gotten up late at night, gone to send them, right? So then interrupting my sleep and interrupting and getting like caught up in all of this stuff, right? Um, and instead, it was just a not, not a big deal. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so now we've got the situational awareness, where are your tasks, what are the obstacles, what are the adversities, what is swirling around in your mind? Then we've got our self-awareness. Uh, are you catastrophizing? Are you making it harder than it needs to be? How are you, uh, you know, emotionally connected? What are your triggers? What types of tasks are you feeling more anxious about than other tasks? Is it about self-confidence? Plan with all of that compassionate curiosity. And then based on your answers, we can move to solution activation. And so one of the biggest pieces of this puzzle is having a system that works for you. And one of the issues I have with a lot of the productivity hacks out, out in the world is they say, this is exactly how you need to do this in absolutes. And the truth is all of us are going to be different, right? And for years I would like fall tra into that trap, right? Where I would go to, um, uh, I, I, I would just be like, oh, okay, David Allen says I should do it like this. And then I would like redo my entire, um, sorry, I'm just going to have one second. Yeah, it's fine. I'm okay. Um, sorry. Uh, anyway, um, sorry. I'm gonna one second. I'm just going to have a little inhale for a moment. Just having a bit of chest stuff. All good. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, I hope nobody's watching at this point, but <laughs> it's okay. If you are, I hope you are watching because it's important work. Um, so yeah, here's the thing, we need a system that's going to work for you. So I used to like overhaul my entire system and then be like, um, you know, oh, I got to do this. And then it wouldn't work for my personality, right? Or it would make me feel less control. And so we've got to look at a whole bunch of different ideas. I give some cool ideas in this book, of course, but for me, my answer became what I call the task circle. And so I categorize all of my tasks into different areas of responsibility. So I am focused on sales, then I'm in sales mode. If I'm focused on marketing, I'm in marketing mode. If I'm focused on my uh, clients, I'm in service mode. And I have the different buckets, admin, personal, etc. 
Oh, actually, no, that's the end of my buckets. Uh, but other people have different types of buckets. But the thing is, is you know, if you, if you can find a way that works for you, another th way that people can organize their tasks are through flags. Uh, Greg actually say, shared a really cool article this weekend uh, about um, how the younger generation doesn't use folders. They just like put everything on their desktop and then search. And I'm like, oh my God, that feels like it's going to be a lot of... Um, <laughs> a lot of extra effort. But even with folders, I can forget what I called things, right? So uh, I, I think that the key is we each have to know what is our what is our own way that it's going to work. But the key, it doesn't matter. Like, you've got to find a system that works for you. But even with a system that works for you, you can still have the anxiety of the to-do list. And so that's what I'm trying to get you to figure out is we got to have the awareness to go, oh, I'm feeling anxious about that. Why am I feeling anxious about that? Am I not trusting the system I have in place? Okay, if I am, then trust it, right? And just challenge yourself. Like, can we go from being anxious for an hour to being anxious for two minutes? That's the key. Got a question. I love a question. You know that. Allison, do you have any thoughts about how long you should give an approach that you feel might not be working before revising? I feel we need to be patient with optimizing as well as ourselves. You do need to be patient. <sighs> this is a tricky one because is it not working because it's too complicated or it, the system doesn't align or is it not working because it's a new habit? And I think that's the awareness we have to start with, because ideally, when you find your system, it should feel like snuggling into your like comfiest PJs. So I would say give it less time than you probably think I would say. I would say a month max. If it's not working in a month, something's got to tweak. Now, we don't necessarily have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You could maybe just need to do a little tweak here and a little tweak there and, uh, you know, to make the system. So maybe we combine different systems, right? So, like, I still use paper and pen. I know. I'm a dinosaur and I love it. I absolutely love it <laughs> because it works for me and my brain. And I have all of the, uh, I'm trying to find, I, I mean, I made a new task circle this morning. I was going to hold it up for you. I've had so many notes today from meetings, I've been on meetings all day, that what I've done, oh, there it is. Uh, all my meeting notes. So here was the new one I made today, right, that had to happen. And... The thing is, so for me, when I when I do a new, so I go from like messy and almost done to, you know, start afresh. I get get things off the list. But when I do this, my entire being is completely trusting in the paper, and I'm like, to, I have no anxiety about what needs to get done because this works. It feels like comfy pajamas. Now, when I go to my ClickUp which is my online system. And I've used all of them, Asana, Trello, uh, Monday.com, Pipedrive, like they all work, right? For some people and some of them they don't. But when ClickUp is the one I like the most, but when I go into ClickUp, I feel less organized in my being. <laughs> so, I use it for certain things, but I don't use it to track my my actual things that I need to do. So if I were sitting here, I had a meeting earlier, somebody was about 10 minutes late, I knew they were going to be 10 minutes late, I went to my task circle, grabbed three things off of it that I was able to do, boom, 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 quick email follow-ups, done. And it's just, it, for me, that's what I need to be able to see. I need to be able to not be looking through and searching things and um, yeah. So that's great. Uh, thank you. And now for part two, what about when our system needs to talk to other people's systems, like on a team, maybe a future topic? Oh, what a great topic. And uh, yes, so 
that because I have things I do with my team, like, you know, my virtual team members and I'm still, so if I have them working on projects, I just like have a little list that says things I've delegated that I just keep an eye on. Um, so that's helpful, but yeah, if it's not working for the team, so it might be duplication, but I would still, if I had to do a lot of interaction with the team, I would still use my paper and then put the stuff up required. But that's duplication. You know what? That's the sort of problem solving we'd have to do directly to find you an answer. Because, and I think one of the things when it comes with teams, because I've done this part with teams before where um, we'll actually, you know, one of my biggest things is you need to have your focus time, right? During the day, you need to have your uninterrupted. This is my coveted time. Please let me do my actual work so I don't have to do it on the weekend. And the only way we can get that done as a team is if everybody communicates and fill, finds out what their flow state is where are they in flow and what um what like for some people that's early in the morning and some people that's middle of the afternoon and some people that's like 11 to 1 like it's different for everybody and so as a team what you can do is actually try to figure out, okay, where, when's your best flow state? When do you want your time, your two hours of like, nobody's supposed to interrupt you. And then we put it together like a little Tetris puzzle and everybody respects their own time, like or everybody else's time. And then they get their time too. And so that is really helpful as a team. But I think the same principle would apply in terms of um, not, like as a team figuring out if the system is not working, what could make it work? And the other thing is I would put the problem solving framework on a system that's working for the team that isn't actually working for the individual. And I would figure out, okay, what is the situational awareness? What parts of it is not actually working? What am, how am I responding? Am I resisting? Am I not seeing something? Is there uh, something in my brain that needs to be added? Maybe you can add in a different flag or whatever, and then solution activation from there. So there's my thinking, Greg. Great question. Okay, folks, it's quarter two. That means our half hour is up. Super excited to be talking about this. And I, I, like, I know anxiety is a very serious topic and it just pulls so much of our energy out of our lives and it doesn't need to, right? Like there are uh, so many strategies. I mean, this is just the beginning. Uh, if you feel a lot of anxiety around your um, around your to-do list, I'm going to encourage you to get this book. It's called Take Back Your Weekend, Stress Less, Do More, Be Happier. And the idea is not necessarily about what you do on the weekend. Like if you want to work in the weekend, great. I want you to shrink the amount of time it takes you to do the work you have to do. So increase your outputs per hour so that you have the freedom to engage and do everything else that you want to do. So tomorrow I have a special guest coming, super excited about this. And uh, if you haven't seen yet, uh, let me pull this up. Uh, do I know how to do that? No. Anyway, uh, I don't know how to pull up a picture here, but uh, Pamela Burton is coming. She is our guest. She is a registered Oh, what is she? A registered nutritionist. Uh, she has butterfly nutrition is her thing. And here's the cool thing about what she and I are going to talk about. Directly about how nutrition and your health impacts your productivity at work. Okay. She's going to challenge some of the typical things that we think we know. And uh, we're going to have a conversation. I've got some questions to ask her and super excited about that. 315 Eastern Tuesday, Wednesday, of course, we have the wild card topic Wednesday. And then Thursday is the book review and insights start with why. Although I read the first half of it without, uh, oh, well, some of it I have highlighters. I was going to say I read a lot of it without a highlighter accessible to me. So I'm like, oh, sure. Anyway, I will finish the rest by Thursday. See, that's why I do this, because then I have to do it. And that's part of 
Tom Bilyeu's uh, reading list that I'm reading. And I've also added in another um, another book that I've been half reading this week too. So uh, anyway, that'll be for next week. I hope you have a beautiful day. And until tomorrow, may you stress less, do more, and be happier. Thanks so much. Bye for now. Where do I end? There it is.